Now, still on ESCOM, it's a back to darkness for South Africans who have enjoyed a slight reprieve from blackouts. ESCOM has announced stage two blackouts from 4 p.m. to 5 a.m. until further notice. The utility says it continues to suffer generation unit breakouts, or rather breakdowns. The blackouts are necessary to replenish any emergency generation reserves. We've been experiencing the worst blackouts in our country's history this year. Over 100 days of blackouts have been recorded. Just days ago, one of the world's biggest ratings agencies, that's Moody's, changed ESCOM's outlook to positive after having it on negative for 15 years. The world has enough coal to last over a hundred years, but can the world survive a hundred more years of burning? Well, fossil fuels are the largest contributor to the climate crisis. So is there room for clean coal technology and renewables? Well, let's discuss this with energy expert Adil Nchabeling. Adil, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Good morning. No, it's a pleasure to have you with us. So COP27 is upon us. Absolutely. And we are hearing that global emissions are at an all-time high and they're still to rise. So clearly it's no longer a question about whether we should be transitioning to more cleaner fossil fuels or cleaner mm. energy, but it's about the energy mix in mm. our South African context. And we know that we have an abundance of coal. Absolutely. So the conversation around clean coal technology has come up. We heard in Parliament, even the likes of Floyd Shibambo on Thursday, talking mm. to the president about probably exploring clean coal technology. But what exactly is clean coal technology? Thank you so much for the opportunity, actually. Clean coal technology is using the current coal that is available and making sure that it goes through stages of ensuring that they remove all the emissions that are actually contained in the coal. As you know that, we know, without, within uh, energy production, coal is a major contributor. We have South Africa, which has about 80% of coal and in terms of our power stations, plus. And within that coal, you need to clean it off in order to ensure that there is no emission. So whatever comes out of the power station no mm -hmm. longer actually contributes towards actually, you know, climate change. It becomes actually water or vapor that is cleaner. So what they do is there's a new technology called Hale technology, high efficiency, low emission units, which they then put them into the power stations. They take away the older power station units that mm -hmm. used to produce the smog that is not required, that yes. actually contributed towards the element of uh, climate change. They then counterfeit it, retrofit it with a unit which then cleans up the process of coal as it goes through the banning. So it would be, as a start, <coughs> compatible with our current power stations. All it's power just stations. removing a unit and putting the one that allows it to be vaporized, as you say. Absolutely. All the power stations can be completely retrofitted and be totally revived and renewed with the Hele technology, which is units that are actually installed on power stations to ensure that it actually extends the life of the power station. Not only that, it cleans up the uh, you know, emissions. It ensures that it has newer, brand new technology that is required into going into the future. So you would almost like have a brand new power station with mm -hmm. the counterfeiting, retrofitting of the existing. So your coal comes in, dirty as it is, it goes through the processes. By the time it comes out, it comes out as clean energy rather than currently the emissions that are being experienced with regards to coal. Mm -hmm. And it would solve the social issues that come with decommissioning some of those power stations and moving to renewables, given that we employ a lot of people, particularly in Pumalang. But we listened to the president on Thursday. He went on to quickly dismiss this, saying there had been investigations around possibly venturing into clean coal technology, but it seemed to come at a higher price ticket. So what exactly is the cost of moving to clean coal technology in comparison to the just transition now that is focused on renewables? Currently, there has nobody, there's no one in South Africa, including the government, that has done an exercise to look at the cost to retrofit the current power stations with Hele technology, which will give you low emissions, which will give you high efficiency. But, you know, the statements that are given in certain tech sectors with regards to energy are usually misinformed. I mean, we've heard about the cost of all other, you know, solutions, for instance, in the past. When we did an investigation, we found that it was not even closer to the cost. So, in this case, what government needs to do is to just issue out an RF, uh, you know, P, 
which is saying, give us proposals of what needs to be done or have ESCOM go out onto the market like they would do with, uh, you know, procurement and say, what is the technologies available and what is the cost per unit or per megawatt so that we can do an assumption. Right now, none, none of that exercise has been done. Nobody has looked at the current available technology and the retrofitting process that needs to be done. So it will be misleading if I would say that, you know, uh, co uh, ref retrofitting the power stations currently would cost a lot of money. In our exercises, we found it extremely cheap to actually Far change. cheaper than the 1.5 trillion cheaper. that we need in the next five years, as the president stated, if we are to continue with our renewables. We're not even talking a trillion. But then what would have that statement, I mean, we don't assume the president would have been dishonest, but when he responded to the MP, Floyd Shibambo, he stated that at this point it looked cost, quite costly, even though he was open to the idea that should technology improve, perhaps they would look into it. But at this point... He stated that what they had found was that it was far costlier than that 1.5 trillion over the next five years that we would need. I wouldn't argue with the president and his office, but I would say that science is the best argument. Everything can be subjected to a process of evaluation scientifically. So they need we a more comprehensive in, study. Yeah, bring in a process by which we give you the solutions that are available to retrofit the power stations. Based on those solutions, you do an evaluation of the cost. And based on the cost that we have ran, those costs were far much more less and likelier to even reach 100 billion on many power stations. So a trillion is an exaggeration that it will cost so much of money. There is no such. This thing costs, it's a unit. It's not even a power station. You're not rebuilding mm. the entire power station. You're flow replacing these process. units. You're just replacing the you know, sulfur processes and making sure that the units with regards to the emissions are actually replaced. And it doesn't cost that fortune. It doesn't cost much. Mm. You know, that's you know, one of the things that we found in the market. There are suppliers that are ready. There are people who already do the technology. Unfortunately, most of the technology is not South African, but it can be customized for South African environment and conditions. Mm. So the availability is there. Because remember, for HELA to be included into the IRP, which is the Integrated Resource Plan of 2019, mm. there were already extensive processes of studies and inputs from experts as well as the industry engineers and everybody. And then it was seen as an opportune opportunity to say, let's now move away from the current coal, retrofit it with heli technology, ensure that it works within the power stations, and then we have clean uh, you know, emissions. Mm. We have no emissions coming out. We have cleaner coal energy and no emissions coming out of the power stations. As a result, we save the jobs that needs to be saved. We save the economy that needs to be saved. We save people from actually dying out of coal emissions as well as uh, the sulfur that is produced out of the coal environment. Mm. Let's talk about the funding mechanism of the just transition. It's probably going to be the biggest talking point Absolutely. there. It seems quite problematic, or at least according to those on this continent, they're saying the loans, they would prefer if it was more around grants as opposed to loans to just mm. ease the debt burden on those of some of those developing countries. What is your position on that? Because at this point even with that $8.5 billion pledge that we got. Mm. It's really for the decommissioning and repurposing project, not necessarily the transition itself. Mm. So what is your position on loans versus grants for developing nations? For developing nations, loans will be an absolute kill. We are not a polluting nation. We are not a polluting continent. And in our case, we should be given grants, which are non-repayable because we have not caused the emissions that the world is complaining about, whereby you would have countries like Europe, countries like uh, the Middle East, countries like uh, you know, Asia, Southeast Asia. You would have countries that are all over in Europe that are emitting in hundreds or thousands of times far more than what Africa is actually emitting. So why should South Africans, as well as Africa, pay the burden for the developing world? This mm -hmm. should have been a grant-based, you know, so a grand solution that is given over to our African continent to say develop your energy and develop your industries. But if it goes to loans, I mean 1.4 trillion rands in terms of loans with regards to buying up uh, the whole moving away from coal, it's going to cost us taxpayers. We're already mm. sitting with a 450 we billion. We are burdening the next generation. <clears throat> out with ESCOM right now. 
on the current European Kusile. Now we're adding another 1.4, which is another 2 trillion in combination. Where and how and how are the consumers able to pay up that debt that will be actually repayable to ESCOM? So mm. the, these issues are not really simple issues. I would argue that when people go to COP27, already South Africa is a signatory of the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. When they go there in Egypt now, they have to make sure that they talk about the issue of saying Africa is not a culprit. Africa is actually just a victim of climate and climate change. And as a result, we should be compensated for the transition rather than having to pay for it ourselves because we didn't cause any of the emissions in the world. Mm -hmm. And it that's why they're even the talking world. about the creation of a compensation fund that will not focus on the transition, Absolutely. but rather to compensate for those fuel, for, for those type of disasters we're seeing now on the mm. continent because they're already incurring losses in so far as natural disasters are concerned as per the climate change. Absolutely. And as a result, they should make sure that Africa's development is prioritized on the basis of the current income and renewables economy and market. But it cannot be a burden and something that we take up as a loan with regards to something that we didn't create. Mm. You know, and it must be made clear to people going there for negotiations, especially the Department of Environmental Affairs that is very strong on environmental issues as well as the clean air, as well as the clean coal. Mm -hmm. They should argue very strongly. But we don't have to face out coal. Coal is still a renewable, it's still a commodity that can be used and can be made to be clean and green. Mm -hmm. And this is the argument that I've heard that most people don't want to advance because it is not in the favor of certain interests. Moving away from coal energy production will be a major cost to our economy, to our people. And we say that HELE, which is high efficiency, low emissions technology, should be employed. Floch Shibambo was right when he actually raised the issue because mm -hmm. he has but read But are IRP. we as citizens, just in closing, are we as citizens really partaking in this conversation? Because I see a lot of professionals, mm. it be doctors, accountants. It's not, it seems to me that it's not that they don't have views, mm. but really they can hardly express their views because of the exclusionary language yeah. when you talk energy. Do you as energy experts feel perhaps you need to lower the barrier or simplify it for citizens so everybody, even my grandmother at home, can partake in this conversation around this transition and how much it's going to cost the next generation. Do you believe you do need to somehow tone down with the exclusionary language when you talk about your base loads and everything so that every citizen can partake in this important debate? Absolutely. Energy is a vital component to people's lives. If people don't understand its value, its utilization, and its importance in terms of developing our lives and improving our lives and increasing on our GDP, we're not able to reach the people. I'm glad that so far over the last few years, since we've been speaking about the whole key topic of energy, since the load shedding breakout started happening and then up to today, most of the population in South Africa is much more aware of what is happening in the coal sector, what is happening in the energy sector, what's happening in the renewable sector. And people are much more informed today to make up the decisions. You know, and the decisions are based on how they are acquiring that information. So what we want to encourage people more is to say, inform yourself. All the energy sources are great and are available, whether it is to do with coal, nuclear, gas, it is to do with diesel, it is to do with uh, renewables, wind, solar, and hydro. All those things must be available to produce electricity and they mm. must compete for their segments not to kill each other as a source. Mm. Right now what we're seeing in the market is the renewables wants to kill the coal sector. The coal sector doesn't want to allow for the renewables to come, to come in. in. Mm. We don't have nuclear in the presence because of people who are coming from a green you know, movement are saying nuclear is a big scarecrow and everything. Whereas all these technologies have proven to be working. Coal has worked. It has emissions. It can be controlled. We have nuclear. Nuclear has had the least disasters in the world. Mm. Why is it Zero not utilized emissions. in the world, in South Africa? We've got uh, renewables that should be included and create SMME jobs for communities that we should be start seeing our people doing the rooftop installations, doing uh, the plans that needs to be done, and working with the technology to ensure that they work with municipalities and communities to provide electricity. We don't see that... To, uh, that, that space of opportunity and excitement mm. happening. Instead, the uh, 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 lobby groups in between these groups are all fighting each other against production of electricity, whereas electricity at the end of the day is electricity. Mm. Most of the technology today can produce uh, uh, what do you call it, low emissions electricity and can produce cheaper electricity. But when this comes to time to be allowed to produce that electricity, then the argument comes. The one with the biggest best, unfortunately, ends up winning. Right now, renewables have the largest money. They can buy the largest print media. They can buy media communications. And they have the spaces to can communicate. Whereas when you come to coal, when you come to uh, nuclear, when you come to gas, 
there is a struggle of resources in order to bring their message across. So we mm -hmm. want to harmonize the space. At least today we tried to give an opportunity around the clean coal technology to hear what it would entail and how much it would cost. At least now the costing needs to be the next exercise, exercise to find out how much it would cost in comparison to the renewables. Adil, thank you very much for thank your time you. this morning. That was energy expert Adil Nchabeleng.